Welcome to If News. Hit that subscribe button and ring that bell so you never miss a breaking story. The stories I have for you this week start with one of the most viral UFO related stories in recent years. The storming of Area 51. The second, the documentation of UFOs by the United States Air Force. This followed by the UFO cryptid and paranormal summer vacation spot and ending with the sale of one of the most spooky properties to have ever been put to film. So first up, a story that continues to grow and grow. What started out as an online petition by a few UFO nerds has now grown into a global movement that includes celebrities like The Rock and Keanu Reeves. I'm of course talking about the planned raid on Area 51. 1.1 million people have pledged that on September 20th they will storm the gates of the secretive military facility, a move which the US Air Force is strongly advising against. Here's the plan as per the creator of the event. We will all meet up at Area 51 Alien Center tourist attraction and coordinate our entry. If we Naruto run, we can move faster than their bullets. Let's see them aliens. Area 51 is probably the most famous location in ufology. The United States Air Force facility, commonly known as Area 51, is a highly classified remote detachment of Edwards Air Force Base within the Nevada test and training range, according to the Central Intelligence Agency. Others say it's the home to all things extraterrestrial here on planet Earth. This idea received a boost recently with Bob Lazar once again appearing on the internet and TV shows across the world. Today, Area 51 may be known for its aliens, but after September 20th, could it become known for a whole different reason? I guess we will have to wait and see. Sticking with the UFO theme, the next story looks inside the US Air Force UFO Research Center, a place where sightings are ranked and rated. The existence of unidentified flying objects has been debated for decades as multiple sightings have been reported from around the world. While many of these sightings have not been officially verified, witnesses have sworn by what they have seen. The term flying saucer was coined in 1947 when Kenneth Arnold told press about his UFO sighting. He stated that the objects looked like saucers skipping on water. Flying saucer is still often used today as a term for UFOs and Arno's sighting is considered to be the first of the modern UFO era. This sighting led to the creation of the first public United States Air Force studies of UFOs known as Project Sign. By the end of 1948, Project Sign was then succeeded by the short-lived project Grudge before eventually formally ending at the end of 1949. The US government's longest investigation into UFO sightings was called Project Blue Book and analyzed over 12,000 sightings and events between 1952 and 1969. In 1973, J. Allen Hynek, an astronomer who worked as an advisor for Project Blue Book, established the Center for UFO Studies after concluding there was enough evidence to confirm the existence of extraterrestrial beings. This year, the US Department of Defense released footage of an unidentified flying object after it declassified footage shot between the summer of 2014 and March of 2015. This series of reports and projects have been working toward an event that many with an interest in the field of ufology have been calling for for decades full disclosure. This story and the many others recently featured in the MSN are the first steps towards revealing the information that we are not alone and that extraterrestrials have been visiting this planet for a long time. They say 2019 is the year the truth will be told. What do you think? Will we see the governments of the world make this announcement soon? If you need a break from all this drama but still want to keep one toe in the world of all things strange, 
then maybe you need to take a holiday to a summer vacation spot that may be slightly off the beaten path. Why not visit the weird and wonderful recommendations from homegrown UFO researcher Chris Rutowski? In a story from GlobalNews.ca, reporter Sam Thompson interviews UFO researcher Chris. Chris lists a number of locations in Manitoba that fans of the strange may like to visit. One of his favorite lesser-known spots in the province is the Sam Waller Museum in the PA's, home to a variety of bizarre exhibits, most notably a cast of a Sasquatch footprint taken by conservation officers at RCMP. Rakowski said, Back in 1979, lots of people had seen this big, black, hairy, eight-foot man-beast up near Gypsumville. It's a very weird museum. It has strange things. It has Buck Rogers pistol ray guns. It has a rocket that was shot into space from Fort Churchill. It's got things like a human appendix. I think it even has a two-headed calf. If that's too weird for you, why not have a swim in one of two Manitoba lakes that are, if you believe sightings going back to the 1930s, home to sea monsters. Manipogo Provincial Park is northeast of Dauphin. It's a real jewel. It's got some of the best beaches, crystal clear blue water, and it's a location where a lot of people say they've seen this lake monster, Manitoba's version of Nessie. If you don't fancy visiting Manitoba, maybe the location of the next story and of one of the scariest films ever might interest you. The house, which featured in the movie The Conjuring. Paul Seaburn wrote the article on MysteriousUniverse.org which says, since the passing of Lorraine Warren in April 2019, it seems that many things associated with her have been popping up in the news regularly. There was her burial in a cemetery haunted by a white lady ghost, a haunted rocking chair that allegedly levitated in the devil made me do it case was put on display at a haunted museum in Las Vegas, only to have the exhibit shut down after visitors reported negative feelings around it. The cast of the new Annabelle Comes Home movie, part of the Conjuring series based on the investigations of Lauren and Ed Warren, reported paranormal activity on the set, and a man allegedly died while viewing the movie in a theater. Now comes word from Rhode Island that the allegedly haunted farmhouse which inspired the 2013 film The Conjuring has been sold to new owners who are said to be a better fit for the famous house. Are they ready to be the next chapter in the real-life horror story that's fast becoming Six Degrees of Lorraine Warren? What do you think about these spooky coincidences and the rest of this week's stories? Are you planning attending the Area 51 raid? Is there anything from the news you would like to see me take a deeper dive into? If so, let me know in the comments below. All the links to this week's stories can be found in the video's description. As always, if you like what I do here on the channel, hit that red button, like and share. Thanks so much for watching, I'll see you next time.